Alright guys, what is up? It is Gnomes. We're here in a game between Bad Brass and Marcus. We have Marcus actually on the do on the bottom hand side playing FS. And we have Bad Brass, as always, playing KF. Um, I'm not exactly sure what Marcus is playing. I think um, in the chat he was talking about playing Aquatics. So that's what I'm going to assume this is going to be, Aquatics. And then um, Bad Brass is most likely playing his KF battle group. It's kind of his, just like how Oxkill has made one and kind of hasn't changed his battle group for years. Either has um, Hijamak or there are a few unit people that they made one battle group and for whatever reason they said, you know what, I'm not changing it. And uh, that, that's kind of like what Bad Brass has done here too. He has a very aggressive KF battle group that he plays. It has the reticulated Splinehawk as well as, um, you know, obviously the Ranger Elites. But then he also plays, I think... At least one or two. Oh, for example, the um, there's the KF tree with Tremor and Seismic Leap, and it's not a bad battle group. It's actually pretty good because he plays a lot of the very good champions. Um, it's just not Rangers usually. I mean, the, Spinehawk is a Ranger. Um, and so is the Elite, but it doesn't play like the uh, the passive champions. What are they called? The um, the Snake Charmers. So he doesn't play those supports. He just plays very aggressive champions. Anyway, so it does not look like a Aquatic anymore from Marcus. It might be FS meta, because this is a, a pretty meta champion generally, um, but it could also be Bog Hoppers. I guess we'll have to see. Poison, potentially? All right, so this looks like Poison then. There you go, finally. So, uh, Finn Lord, not fully into the Poison theme, but a little bit, and you do need a few champions that kind of... Um, when you're playing a, a attack-based battle group, such as Poison, you need some champions that don't have exactly that attack type, or else you'll be wrecked by Void Shield. I have a Poison and a uh, Sonic battle group, for example, and in my Sonic battle group, <clears throat> I'll play, uh, what's it called, the either the um, Whirling Quarry, or I'll play the... Uh, a few magic attack tam attack type champions as well, just because you need different attack types, or else you get wrecked. Um, so yeah, Finn Lord does have poison rank one, but mostly a meta champion, and then obviously the poison elemental with poison cloud, poison charge. What is this? All right, maybe this is meta then. I thought this was be would be poison because you have this guy, and this is basically only ever played in poison, poison cloud and poison charge. Blind, bounce. Probably going to rush with the elite. That's what he always does. Oh, he's mobility, so he's going to rush down here instead. Yeah, this is what I was saying. This is what how um, he always plays. He just rushes. He's very aggressive battle group and rushes you. I thought he would rush down here, but it's probably safer to go over here because otherwise um, the cards could maybe move down. Exactly. Put a relic down, or he's just going to move in. All right, relic. He could have also. He does have mobility because of the empowered speed, so he could have just moved in. But this way, he attacks once. Yeah, and now it's zero fonts to two. So, Marcus is losing so far. Ooh, elite blade putting him at sixty nine health, seventeen damage. All right. So Marcus will take this side fall. He's saying, you know what? See, this is kind of a hard choice, really, um, with this Karch. Either Karch moves back to help support this Doombringer, because we do have this uh, Investigator coming to um, attack, as well as the Splinehawk. And the Doombringer is more of a late game. Yeah, you have Blind, which is nice, but generally he doesn't do amazing by himself. He needs a bit of support, at least until the Adaptive goes off. Um, but yeah, so... Instead of having Karch help, he's having Karch get this font, so now it'll be one font to two. It's hard to say if that's the better choice, but I guess we'll see. What was that? Oh, Corrode. Corrode, Poison Cloud. Now the Elite cannot really efficiently move over to attack the Elemental. He could have actually moved into attack once. But the dodge would have made it so that he would just waste the attack anyhow. Alright, so he's, bottom, he's got bottom font. But it's now two fonts to one. The Doombringer is damaged, and he will become illuminated here. Now it's zero defense. Twelve. No. 
it's actually a hard choice. He probably should have attacked first with the Splinehawk to get the Initiator off, right? He would have done four extra damage. The reason he attacked first with the... Oh, he's not even attacking. Okay. That's, in, that's interesting. Oh, he's blinded. That's why. Okay. I'm dumb. Yeah, the, the blind from the Doombringer. I didn't see it for some reason. Because <laughs> usually it's on the face or on the head. But here it's on the wing. The little animation for blind. So... It's funny. It's like, oh no, you've blinded my my side armpit. Alright, deploy the snake answer. Very strong champion. I think this champion is insane. Um, whenever I play against him. Oh, I wonder if he's gonna play arrow shot. Might as well, right? This doesn't have uh deflect. So you could have just arrow shot there. Decides to keep it though. This is now think where also things are dangerous for bad brass. Yes, he's a champion uh, or sorry, a fawn ahead, but what could happen is if um one of these champions get like focused, right? Alright, War Banner is down. He'll get this font back. See if he deploys. I don't think he has enough Nora. He might. He's only had three champions. Alright, maybe he can deploy. Because this is expensive, cheap, middle, expensive. And this is, yeah, so he does have enough to deploy. Alright, so now we have two champions with the adaptive that just went off. So he's now at 12 damage and he's now at 13. So maybe this is an adaptive battle group. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Decides not to move in with the uh, poison elemental. Doesn't want to get double tapped for 30 damage. Even though he has yeah, one defense. Alright. I think this turn is what matters right here. Another elite blade. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. 16 damage. He could have double tapped. We could have gotten the kill here. Or, oh, no, he's actually one off to be able to attack with the spawn off. Good positioning by Marcus. Otherwise, I think that would have been a kill because that would have been 30. No, that would have been 16. Yeah, 16, 16. Plus, if he attacked first with him, that's 14. I think it's a kill. All right, so Investigator, was that one attack or two attacks? Two attacks. No, one. Only one. All right, so there's, yeah, Grimlix Bane is a kill. Gets the Nora Globe, and he's in the font. Now, we do have a double tap coming out from Karch. That's not too much, though. Karch's base damage isn't that high. The real strength that Karch comes from is just how tanky he is as a range champion with the 7 speed. 7 speed, good base stats, leap. Means he's moving like 9 spaces a turn. Alright, so double tap here if he wants. Heart Strike, he will be at half health once he attacks 1. So it will deal um, first 11, or sorry, first 10, and then 12. Oh no, zero defense, okay. So first 11, then 13. All right, now you can just double tap for 13, 13. Yeah, there's the 13, 13. Gets this kill. He also gains the extra AP. Hard strike, what it says is when this champion makes a successful basic attack against a champion with 50% or less HP, it gains one AP and two damage. So he gained two AP from that, um, which is nice. It means he only kind of, it was like a, a medium version of... Um, well, I guess you could have counted it as multi-attack, really. Now, I wonder if he moves in to get this Nora Globe. He could do that um, if he's trying to prevent the Snake Dancer from taking it. But wasting all your AP on Finlord isn't amazing, as well as grouping up isn't too good, right? You don't want to put them right next to each other because then a spell could be played. Like uh, Brambles. Even though, like I said... Uh, those are... Uh, like I said... Um, Bad Braz hasn't changed his battle group in a very long time, and I don't think he plays Brambles. He might play like an attack spell, but I don't think he plays Brambles. We will see. Again, it is um, it is full fashion FS, so don't forget about that. We have Marsh Song as well as the half FS bonus, so even though he's been down a font, he should still be fine in Nora. Um, he should be maybe even. All right, ooh, goes by. I think he could have actually moved over here. I guess he's afraid of double tap. Yeah, that's fine then, I guess. Yeah, but um, Snake Dancer is definitely one of the best single champions to have 1v1-ing. Because you can use the attack um, with the entangling attack, which means that your enemy can't really move, and you can always stay in range, so that evasive is really useful. So yeah, now it's still going to be two fonts to one by taking this bottom font. Um, I mean, I'm guessing that the cards will move in there, so it's not three fonts to one. The Nora Globe will go over to Marcus, and he deploys. Nice deploy. Really nice deploy, actually, to make sure Ranger Lee is safe. I mean, he's at 58 health. 
So he's pretty tanky. He has dodge rank 1. So he will uh, be able to kind of prevent this Elgar from hitting him too much. Alright. Ooh, he's not going bot. Gonna attack the Aurora instead. Good move. Good play. Um, I, I Like I just said, I just said that this Snake Dancer is insane in 1v1s, right? You you just have evasive against a ranged champion? No, you don't want to take that fight. And then you have a tangling attack, so he can't run away. Once he gets attacked, he just won't be able to run away anymore, and then he'll die, right? So basically, your only chance is like, hey, I'm going to, you know, um, attack once, and then, you know, hopefully have friends help support. But as he sees, like... All right, what was that buffer? Something invisible was just played. Yeah, so I'm guessing that was a um, cleansing mist used. It could be a backfire potentially, but people don't really play backfire. Most likely a cleansing mist on these four here. Yeah, so that's what he said. He said, hey, and that was a good move. Like I said, just don't go bot. All right, so poison, poison damage, more poison charge, more poison ideas. It's like half poison, half meta, I guess. The reason you play Augur, even though he's not poison, is because of knockback, or slam, I mean. And you want to be able to slam through a poison cloud. So you can poison cloud, and then use poison charge, plus poison charge. And you're doing four extra damage per movement, right? So that's already, I think, three. Three plus four is seven. You're doing seven damage per movement. It's not bad. I mean, it's not amazing. It's a bit, it's a lot of setup. But it's a funny combo, and it's a cool battle group, right? Mm -hmm. Two defense, surprisingly. Have three spells been played? No. I guess they have. Yeah, there's the Cleansing Mist. Heals these four. Ranger Elite here. Kind of in a bad position, really. Alright, so they're both going to use the Poison Charge. We saw the Poison. I think there's a Protection on him. No po no Protection, okay. 10 damage. Now here's the Knockback. Does 12 and 7, right? Yeah, there's 12 and 7. There's no other Knockback, though, that I can see. He has dodge up, so he can only attack once with the Fin Lord. He could have actually um, attacked once with Fin Lord, and then once with Augur would have done uh, 14 damage extra, right? It would have done 7 more damage because of the double knockback instead of the singular knockback. Alright, so he double taps here. He has Heart Strike, right? So yeah, he's actually doing a bit more damage. He's probably dead, right? To, po the, to the Poison Cloud and to the Poison. He's at 5 health. I think that's Poison does 3, but then the Poison Cloud, does that actually do damage by itself? Also, I don't know how um, this works with the Poisoned. Okay, well. Poison is Fumes to get the kill. But we um, had a, yeah, look at all these spells played. So what, yeah, exactly here, over here is the Ranger Elite. So what happened is we had Escape Magic played. Um, the poison, poison Cloud was used to get that kill, or Poisonous Fume, sorry. Um, it's not an expensive spell, but it's still a spell you don't really want to have to use. Um, so you, you use the Poison Cloud, got the got the kill, sort of say. Um, now it's two fawns to, to one. Again, because the snake dancer moves in. And again, that's how Bad Brass plays. And it's really something that will get you every once in a while. Especially when he goes first. The, my, I hate it. I played against him, with against this battle group, so often on the um, IS map. It's so annoying. So the IS map um, has the two chasms on the side, and he always rushes you. He has Splinehawk, 
into Ranger Elite every single fucking time, and then middle he plays something. So then he gets your font with a Ranger Elite, so you're like, okay, I'm not 1v1ing that. And then he has his side font with the, with the Reticulous Spinehawk, and then he gets mid, and you just can't do anything. Ooh, there's the heal. Heals for 8 with the Divine Favor. Double, double Apocalypse Age. I used to hate this champion. Now I like it a bit more. I still don't love it. I still think there's better in KF. But uh, I, I used to really just completely hate this champion. Ooh, he transfigures. That's not a horrible idea, saying, hey, I win the game now. Right? Like, now all these champions will not get killed for the next four turns. So he's just saying, you know what? Get off me. Kajra also took quite a bit of damage from this Aurora because of the stacks from Spell Swallower. Yeah, so that's just what happens when he rushes you. It's hard. You there's very there are very few things that I can actually win off that. But right now it's three fonts to one. Yes, we have double Marsh Song going, but it's still does he have heal? Yeah, he does. I'll say transfer life, so that's why he's keeping the Fin Lord so safe. Yeah, it's double Marsh Song, so I guess you could say he's up one he has one more font, I guess potentially you could say that. So then it's two fonts to three, but still. The one nice thing though is with this transfigure, um, Bad Brise is gaining less Nora, right? All right, gets the AP twice. Now you can double tap here, hit both of them once maybe. Wouldn't be a horrible idea. Elite Blade on him now, so now he has reflexes and evasive. So evasive rank three, reflexes rank three, poison rank two, and all this resistance. All right, so he only attacks once. He could have double tapped, but like he's so tanky. Yeah, it's okay though. Playing safe is not a bad idea. That's such a. I mean, this is 35 Nora, so this is what 111 Nora almost, or 115. Sorry, 115. Why is it 111? <laughs> 115 Nora for this champion, basically. Okay, you can hit once. It does cause the jolt. Which is basically the only way you're gonna deal damage is through like dots. You when you're in the font deployment zone, you get two extra health. So, All right, one of the marshongs is gone though. So yeah, staying in the font here is not a horrible idea, just to get the two extra health at the end of the turn. I mean, it's not a lot, but you never know. Deploys though, which is not bad. He's, he's staying even. One, two, three, four, five. Versus one, two, three, four, five. So he's actually up a champion at the moment. That's pretty impressive. It's just that the uh, three fonts is pretty bad. And moving Ancient in is not an amazing idea against amp comps usually. Because they can all of a sudden do a lot of extra damage to you that you didn't see coming. Move him up as well. And you're afraid of the pull though. Like I like the bloom, and I, I would want to heal on it, but you're afraid of the pull, so you can't really do that. Seventeen damage. Look at that. Plus six. One from War Banner, and I guess five spells have been played. Growth, right? So you can heal. You can move the um, Ranger lead in. To get some healing. I mean, three is not a lot. Yeah, he does. Okay. But you might as well. One, two, three, four, five. Thing is, though, what happens with the Apocles is um, with the time bend, this begins on cooldown. But basically, what happens is they go out of the they like they leave the um the game and they pop back with and then they double they divine favor and they balance again. So you get more value off it. This does begin on cooldown. That's why this ability is not very good. Um, but wouldn't be bad to heal up some of these guys. Well, 
one font to three, but transfigure. So it's kind of even, really, in Nora wise. Also, he has the FS bonus. But like champion wise, these are expensive champions. These are high value champions, right? 80 Nora, 80 Nora, 80 Nora, 60, 70 Nora. Ooh, War Banner out does make this harder. And here we have 60, 70, 70, 80, 73, 90. Alright, so now I have double March song going. So yeah, March is not doing half bad. He is able to here uh, kind of stabilize in a way. Once Marcus is able to get this middle font back, like his font, I think he's winning. And it was a good idea, like I said before, not to go to the side font. I think a lot of people would have done that. They would have been like, oh shit, he's, he's going to be a font up. But sometimes you have to see like, hey, this 1v1, I'll never win. And I'll just slowly lose it. Not even that slowly. I'll lose it within three turns. And I don't have enough time to send something else up there. So is it worth it to just die within three turns just so that I can stall the font out? No, it's not. Like you want to keep Karch alive. It depends what you send up. Like if you send up maybe the uh, Fentech. You can be like, alright, he's very tanky, he'll take a few more turns, as well as when he dies, I don't care as much, because he's only 62 Nora. Oh, uh, there, ooh, look at that. Damn. Plus the, uh, I like Cathay right there now, from the, what's it called? Fanfare. So yeah, sometimes you just see, is it worth it? Like, it's not worth having your Finlord die. Maybe a, a, a tank, but not, not the other champs. Alright, I'm gonna be right back, I'm gonna get some food, this is gonna... Looks like it might take a while, so I might as well do some other things while I have the time. I'll just leave it like this. So, <clears throat> I'm back. It looks like he was able to get the uh, Catharsis Bloom down. Catharsis Bloom is dead, and he is able to deploy the Slick and Bloods. The reason he's allowed, or not allowed, but he's able to deploy so often is really just the double Marsh Song with the FS bonus. So, he's actually kind of even in Nora now. He actually, if anything, might be ahead, right? Double Marsh Song, you're getting 20 extra Nora a turn, plus FS, but 26 extra Nora a turn. So, he's like two fonts up. And he's right now at three fonts, but no, no uh, thing. So, it could. I think they're even in Nora. And now, when he gets this, he's gonna get his middle font back. All right, so he pops back out. Yeah, I'm wondering why he's not deploying. He should have enough Nora to deploy as well, really. All right, moves in with the um, Snake Dancer. Going to attack Finlord once. Is, does he have a Bane Blast? It's actually barely off the kill. Or Grimlix Bane, sorry. Grimlix Bane would do 15, and he's at 20, and then he has plus 4, so he has 19 right now. Ooh. Moves up with the Apocal, though, which is a bit dangerous. He's at 58 health, so he's quite tanky. 9. Now he could Grimlix Bane, and that would be a kill. Maybe Arrow Shot. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, he can Arrow Shot. So arrow shot for the kill here. <clears throat> His Apocal though is in danger. Zero defense, 58 health. 58 health is a lot, but zero defense. And there's a lot of champions here that can deal damage. Also, these two are lined up. So we could maybe see like a knockback thing going on. But there's not that much other knockback. I'm guessing we'll just see a pull and a kill though. Pull the Apocal forward, kill it, get the Nor Globe, get this Nor Globe, and attack one some other champion maybe. That's what I'm looking at. I don't know what spells and equips he has, so it's hard to tell. But like my play now would be 
either pull the ranger if I think I can get the kill, or just pull the apocle. Get this Nora Globe. Attack the Wilderkin once, who's at 67 health. Um, oh yeah, so there's the poison charge. So we could see a double poison charge, poison cloud. Yeah, poison cloud. Now the knockback damage will deal some, some more, right? Double poison. Ah, one of them was a poisonous fumes. Or what? Yeah, poisonous fumes was used for that extra 10 damage. So that's 20 damage dealt to these two guys right now. He can attack once. Oh, true, true, true. We have the uh, water vortex. Nicely done. So now the ranger elite is close to dead. Paco stage at 12 health. He's definitely dead. Yeah. Ah, okay. Girl mix or uh, Bane. What's it called? Uh, escape magic. Sorry. Thing is, he has the dodge up, so you have to attack him twice. You can move in and attack. He might die then to the poison. This is a tanky champion. Yeah, but double kill, right? The elite is stuck there because of the poison. He can't want to walk away. Okay, just kills it like that. And now we have this Doombringer amping up. This looks like game now. Because now it's um, two fonts, two secure fonts, right? These guys can't move in. Two fonts to three. But it's FS, he has a bigger champ on the board, as well as uh, he hasn't deployed his relic, or sorry, his um, shrine, he hasn't transfigured. This Nor Globe should go over though, yeah. The Nor Globe Bad Brass will take. But it's like tank in the front, tank in the front. 67. <laughs> okay, this one will be hard to kill, though. That's for sure. Alright, so he gets the Nora Globe. Takes poison damage for it, though. You do not want to move through here ever, right? Like, he'll be at 50 health if he does that. That's a bad idea. Is actually attacking the Marsh Gargantuan. I think it's a misplay. I don't. Any attacks second with him? Ooh, 23 health or 23 damage, though. Yeah, if you're going to attack the Moog, attack first with the champion with Illuminate, right? He would have done extra damage, three extra damage, which could have been worth it. So that's a bit of a misplay. There's the um, time bend. So he's going to come back and heal as well as balance, which is not bad. Ooh, he deploys as well. The Delim at that. Delim, pretty uh, high va value champion with that mass teleport, adaptive, purging flames. So here's a pull, I'm guessing. Pull into his knockback into the terrain here is good. You can pull him here, attack from ranged once with the poison elemental or something, and then knock back with the agur. Ah, okay, or not? Oh, he's still gonna pull. Just pull him into the mushroom. Okay. So it takes three. He's now vulnerable to poison damage. He needs to attack ranged with the elemental first. Right. Or with the Marsh Gargantuan. There's the Corrode as well. It gets rid of... Alright, so now he doesn't have reflexes anymore. Oh, wait. There's no dodge on this champion. Oh, GG. Well played. Nice. So that's game. Uh, Marcus wins it, I'm guessing, right? He uh, got the kill. He was able to stabilize really insanely. Once the um, Ranger Elite got that bottom font, I was like, okay, this is over. Because that's what happens to me every single time on that IS map. I'm like, okay, fuck it. Um, on this map, you can kind of defend a bit better just because your fonts are closer to your shrine. Um, but yeah, nicely done. Well done. He uh, got some nice kills, was able to defend. His decision making was also good in that he didn't go to that side font with the Karch. He kind of just said, hey, you've, you know, I think, he, I don't know why Bad Brass transfigured. If Bad Brass hadn't transfigured, the game would have been much closer, but he did. And he started losing a Nora, right? So then I was like, oh, I'll just keep playing Marsh Song. And yeah, I'm two fonts down, but I'll just keep playing Marsh Song. I have FS bonus. And I'm playing efficiently, right? And then he just got some kills, so GG.